There are six myths in the world of kidney health that are so widely believed that they are even propagated by doctors. Calories yeah. in, calories out. Yeah. Everyone's very different, it's very not that specific. Simple. Catherine here. Today we talk about one of the worst enemies of your kidney health, misinformation. But how can you save your kidneys from misinformation when even doctors, and not just TV doctors, even your doctors are peddling some of the most dangerous myths about kidney health? Well, this is why we are here today. We are going to see if it's true that eating in deficit does not necessarily translate to fat loss. And also, are all herbal supplements actually bad for the kidneys? And also, can you really reverse stage 5 CKD or is that just a myth as well? And more. Yes, a lot of myths to debunk. So let's start immediately with a myth that probably most of you have heard from your doctors. Number six, you should not take vitamins with CKD. Now, this is a message from one of you guys, Olivia D.I. left in comment section. She says, my doctor phoned me to ask why I need my prescription of K2. I told him it worked with vitamin D3. Doctor has never heard of anyone taking K2. They will stop prescribing. So she is actually trying to teach her doctor about vitamin K2, but as we can see, her doctor refused to give her this vitamin. So who is right in this case, the doctor or the patient? Well, you see, doctors are absolutely right to tell you that taking vitamins has its risks. But there are also areas in which this particular doctor is not knowledgeable. And this is a problem. Vitamin K2 supplementation is absolutely key if you want to avoid arterial calcification risk while taking vitamin D3. Yes, what this doctor is not taking into account is one key fact. According to statistics and depending on stage, up to 84.7% of kidney disease patients have low levels of vitamin D. And doctors should know this because this study we are looking at was published on a medical journal about nephrology. So yeah, our myth number six, you should not take vitamins with CKD, is debunked. Myth number five. Okay, this is something probably every single kidney disease patient has heard about from their doctors. Everyone believes that you cannot reverse CKD in the advanced stages. So, is this a myth as well? Clearly, it's extremely hard for a patient in stage four or even five of kidney disease to start seeing constant, significant improvements in their kidney function. For those watching me that don't know about kidney disease stages, CKD is a progressive disease that gets worse when the stage gets higher. Usually patients in stage four and five are not doing well and they are also suffering from comorbidities and complications. These are other pathologies that makes everything a lot worse, clearly. We are talking about diabetes, high blood pressure, anemia, mineral and bone disorder, heart issues and more. This is why I would not hold a grudge to my doctor if he told me that CKD stage 4 and 5 cannot be reversed. But you see, it's a proven fact that kidney disease can actually be reversed even in stage 5 patients that are not yet on dialysis. This is what a very noteworthy study published in the journal PLOS ONE was able to prove. This research involved more than 400 CKD patients stage 2 to 5 and lasted more than 8 years. 62 of them were able to improve. Incredibly, some of these 62 improvers were in stage 4 or 5 of CKD. And this study tells us that it's not the stage of CKD you are in that determines how your kidney function will change, but it's the diet you are following and the treatment you are receiving. This is why it is extremely important to understand that our myth number five, you cannot reverse CKD in the advanced stages, is debunked. Okay, time for our number four now, another myth 
that too many doctors still believe in. Number four, if you have CKD, you must avoid high potassium foods. Never let a slice of tomato pass your lips. This was the mantra of many kidney doctors back in the day. And it still is the mantra of some doctors today. I know this because many of you guys are still mad at me when I recommend foods such as bananas, potatoes, avocado, spinach, and so on. Now guys, while I wouldn't hold a grudge to a doctor that thinks that stage 5 kidney disease is not reversible, if a doctor tells me that all CKD patients must avoid all high potassium foods, well, I would be very mad. This is unacceptable in 2024. A doctor has no right to still be telling all CKD patients to avoid high potassium foods. Why, you may ask? First of all, because just a small percentage of CKD patients also suffer from high potassium levels. And keep in mind that if your potassium levels are not too high, high potassium fruit and veggies are extremely healthy for you. Bananas, potatoes, avocados are so healthy for people with CKD that today the rule book for the renal diet changed. What the current rule for physicians treating CKD patients say is that even if the patient has too high potassium levels, restricting the intake of fruit and veggies should only be considered as a last resort. Guys, we know very well today that too high potassium level in CKD patients is caused by medications, not the diet. It's even in the rule book and it is extremely important to treat the real cause of high potassium level, right? Keep in mind that this is a condition that could literally cost your life. This is why it is not acceptable to still tell CKD patients to avoid potatoes and tomatoes when they have a life-threatening condition that is caused by prescription medications. Remember, Clinicians should actively investigate other factors that contribute to hyperkalemia before reducing dietary potassium intake. This is what the rule book for CKD treatment says. And this is also why our number four, if you have CKD, you must avoid high potassium foods, is also debunked. Now guys, if you want to learn more about how to manage potassium, I've talked way more in depth about this in my recent video. It's up here and also down in the description. Up next, our number three. This is going to be interesting because it's about something you guys always ask in comment section. Number three, herbs can be dangerous if you have CKD. Reading your comments, it's clear that a lot of doctors have reserves when it comes in particular to herbal remedies. Seems like every time you ask about this or that herb, you are always told to flat out avoid it. And you see, there are many reasons why doctors tell CKD patients to avoid herbal remedies. Contamination is one. There are many documented cases of people suffering kidney damage because they took the wrong herb. Then there are interactions. Then there is the fact that some herbs do damage the kidneys, especially in those with CKD. Another problem, many doctors are not knowledgeable about herbal remedies. Thus, they won't be able to diagnose you correctly in case of a problem. And I could go on forever here. I mean, this is a very broad topic. You could literally write a master's degree thesis about the pros and cons of natural supplements and herbs in the treatment of CKD. And I'm telling you this because, well, I actually did. This is why here on Double Kini, you won't see a lot of herbal remedies recommended. There are thousands of herbal remedies I could talk about, but I chose not to. Instead, I have only recommended a handful over the course of the years. Only few things are supported by scientific evidence so strong that they are worth the risk. And I'm talking about cordyceps, astragalus, ginseng, and just a few other herbs, really. So is our myth herbs can be dangerous if you have CKD debunked? No, this is not a myth. It's not debunked. Get informed very well before using any herbal remedy, even if it's something I recommend, right? Up 
up next, this is a very important one about the diet for kidney disease and diabetes in particular. Many people, including some doctors, are convinced that number two, you must completely avoid fruit and starchy vegetables with diabetes. Now, this seems very straightforward. Diabetes is caused by too much sugar going around, which is a type of carbohydrate. So it's clear that if you want to get better, you must avoid all these carbs and sugar. So this is easily proven true, right? Well, not really. To understand if this is a myth or not, we must go a little bit more in depth about type 2 diabetes. Because you see, the cause of type 2 diabetes is not carbs per se. The cause is insulin resistance. In people with diabetes, the body cells become resistant to the effects of insulin. So they don't absorb glucose from the bloodstream efficiently, leading to high blood sugar levels. So it's clear that decreasing sugar intake may help controlling this symptom of insulin resistance. But, but is it actually going to improve the cause of the issue? Remember that our goal is to get better here, not just to, you know, survive. And if our goal is to get better with type 2 diabetes, there is only one type of sugar that you need to completely avoid. Added sugar. Like the sugar you find in processed foods, alright? And the reason is not what you think. You see, science tells us that it's not sugar itself that causes insulin resistance and then diabetes. This is a very common misconception that is caused by the fact that excess body fat causes insulin resistance, as we can see, especially when paired with inactivity, alright? So keep in mind that excess body fat and inactivity cause type 2 diabetes, alright? This is important because now you may ask, isn't avoiding fruit and starch veggies a good strategy to lose that body fat then? And the answer is no, not at all. If you want to lose weight, you must eat fruit and veggies in moderation while avoiding processed high sugar, high fat foods. I mean, fruit in particular is so healthy for you that even the American Diabetes Association recommends eating fruit. So the myth that you must completely avoid fruit and starch vegetables with diabetes is absolutely debunked. Now guys, this brings us to our number one myth for today. This is going to be very interesting. It's a really hot topic. Large studies have been made recently to prove or disprove that number one, counting calories for weight loss does not work for everyone. Okay, I bet that you have heard this statement a million times. Calories yeah. in, calories out. Yeah. Everyone's very different, it's very specific. Simple. A lot of people complain that even if they eat very little, they still gain weight. This is especially common in people taking medications or in those with health issues that cause weight gain. This includes diabetes, by the way. The reason why this happens, hormones. Hormones are actually why for some people it is so hard to actually lose weight. But on the other hand, some people will tell you that the only way you can actually lose weight is by eating less calories than you burn, alright? This is why you should count calories because you must be sure you are not eating too many calories. Nothing else works, only counting calories. So who is right, the hormone people or the calorie people? Now, part of the reason why I'm talking about this today is a comment from one of you guys, M. Ananta Krishnan. By the way, he always watches my videos and he's very knowledgeable about health topics. He has been watching my channel for years as well. This is what he says about counting calories. The simple logic of using calories in calories out does not work in humans. A calorie in biology is not the same as a calorie in physics. The key difference in humans mammals is the hormonal response by the body to various types of food. The body reacts differently in hormonal terms when consuming carbohydrates, protein, fat or fiber and that in turn determines whether it is burned as energy used for body repair, stored as ready to use glycogen or stored as unwanted welcome visceral fat. Therefore, the type of food plus the hormonal response to that the particular type of food from the body together will determine the end result. Now guys, 
What he says here is right, at least in part. This is called the carbohydrate insulin hypothesis, by the way. And it's based on the fact that hormonal response to foods is 100% real and it will make a huge difference in terms of end results with a weight loss diet. No doubt about it. I mean, I know that this is right because I've tried it on myself. Whenever I go on a diet, I always start by removing anything containing processed sugars from my shopping cart. Seriously, I start my diets a week before and at the supermarket. I know that the sugar they hide in everything will cause me cravings that will make my diet harder to follow. So are we confirming that counting calories does not work then? Well, no, not at all. The opposite is actually true because you see, the only way in which hormones will make weight loss harder is by making you eat more. Think about this. Because you see, the reason why I avoid processed sugars even if I count calories is because I don't want to feel hungry one hour after a meal, all right? And added sugar does just that. But you see, this does not prove that you can lose weight without eating less calories than you burn. This is impossible. Why am I so sure, you may ask? Well, because of science. Several large studies were made to confirm or deny this hormone theory, which is actually called carbohydrate insulin hypothesis. This hypothesis suggests that carbohydrate, not calorie, restriction, confers a metabolic advantage, allowing fat intake without weight gain. If this was true, it would completely disprove counting calories. But you see, no one ever was able to prove the carbohydrate insulin hypothesis, not even close. You can't prove that eating more calories makes you lose weight, all right? Not even if all these calories only come from fat and protein. And I quote, results, from a number of sources refute both the theory and effectiveness of the carbohydrate insulin hypothesis. Instead, risk for obesity is primarily determined by total calorie intake. Guys, what this proves is that only calories matter when it comes to weight loss. It doesn't matter if you eat carbs or fat or protein. It doesn't matter if you eat at night, if you eat fast, or if you eat one time a day or 10 times a day. The only thing that matters for weight loss is calories. And the only people that will tell you that you can lose weight without restricting calories are those trying to sell you a diet plan. Seriously, who would buy a fat loss diet if they knew that all it matters for fat loss is calorie in, calorie out? So in short, hormones are important, but only because they make you eat more. I mean, have you ever seen people from a farmish country suffering from obesity? No? Do you think their hormones are any different? No guys, it's just the calories. Remember, only people from countries where food is abundantly available can be overweight or obese. This is why our number one, counting calories for weight loss does not work for everyone, is completely debunked. And guys, if you don't believe that what I say is true, feel free to pause in comment section any serious scientific paper that proves that you can lose weight without being in caloric deficit, but you won't be able to find it. And guys, if you want to learn more about the diet for diabetes and kidney disease, my video up here is for you and this is all for today. Thank you for watching. God bless you all. Bye.